A black screen, snow begins to fall. In Japanese and English, thick letters, snow. Another winter, another year gone by. Loss of my friends, but the births of new life. This year's rice crop, perfect to add to the soybeans, to make another barrel of the best miso. What we feed the demons this year, I hope they feed from the strength of all the hard workers who toiled in the field, who stirred the fermentation to bring this fine broth. May it clear and cleanse the bad luck from last year to bring in the new. In a wood-paneled home. Now, come on, let's hurry. A hand makes his sesame seeds into rice. Three generations of women prepare food together, cutting sushi rolls, rolling mochi. Bachan, I'm not scared this year. Well, that's good. It means you're grown up. Bachan, are you afraid? I could be scared. But I know what to do if that namahage comes. Waving a woven fan over the rice, slicing vinegar into the rice, placing a whole grilled mackerel on a small plate, a wooden box with fish cakes and vegetables, pouring soup into bowls, laying out the food on the table with care, one dish at a time, onto a dark purple runner with crescent moons that lines the table. Each carries a dish to the dining room, adding to the array of savory food and dessert. In a line, they stand together, looking at the table. Fade to black. The six women in aprons stand and look intently upward. Together, turn to gaze at the clock on the wall. Could the namahage be late? <laughs> The young girl doesn't laugh. Good night. Good night. Good night. One by one, they leave. Grandmother holds the girl's shoulders, guides her out. Midnight, the brass pendulum swings, fade to black. Grandmother and the girl tucked into bed, flower blossoms on the pillowcases. They're shoulder to shoulder, blanket pulled to their chins, tree branches in the dark night. Outside on the wooden stairs, Grandmother asleep, the girl with eyes wide. Outside a dimly lit fern. Bachan, how did you spend your year? In the same way I have every year. I worked in the rice fields. I watered the garden. I gave food to the cats. I went for walks. I have the same dream that you and your father go out for walks and you leave me behind. Bachan, you always have that dream. <laughs> I, I know. How did you spend your year? I don't know. It went by so fast for me. Mm. I played with my friends. I bought lots of things. Mm. I'm so busy. I played a lot. As you should when you are young. Mm. Grandmother smiles, eyes half shut. <sighs> Closes her eyes again. The girls remain open. Grandmother settles in, fade to black. Tidy stacks of white and blue dishes. The girl glances around. The outside gate thrown open, several figures rush through. One carries a book, one a sword. The girl looks toward the window, grips the comforter near her chin. More and more enter wearing paper mache masks, the namahage fused with Yuki Onna, a female snow spirit. The girl grimaces, eyes darting. The figures in the yard wearing reversed kimonos and straw neck pieces. Grandmother laughing at Namahage's offering in the girl's mind. The figures climb the stairs up to the house. The other women laughing. The shadow of one figure on the wall. Now peering around the corner, a painted-on smile filling the mask. They slide open the door. 
The covers pulled up to the girl's eyes. They enter the house. She flinches. One by one, they walk in. Grandmother's eyes pop open, alert. They take long, wide steps through the house. Grandmother nestles against the girl. They wrap their arms around each other. The figures continue to explore the home, looking about carefully in the dark. Are there any cry babies? I'm looking for a Mae. Mae, have you been sitting around the fire? All day doing nothing. Lazy. If you've been sitting around all day doing nothing, you must have Namomi from all the sitting around all day. Dear Namahage, could you be getting the wrong person? Though she is Maie. My name is Maie. She is Maie, named after me. So I am the first of the family called and named Maie. Maybe you are talking about me. No. According to the book, I see you in the rice fields. I see you harvesting the rice for sake. The rice also used for your family's most delicious miso. It's not you who is lazy. But Namahage-san, why don't you try the sake for which we are famous for? Whispers to Mae, who runs out. Yes, you should make sure that it is really Mae, the little one that you are after, and not me. Try the sake. It should tell you if the hands that harvested the rice this year and the last were idle. Made with the best-tasting rice, the best-tasting sake. Maie grabs a cup and carafe. Go ahead. I mustn't drink much. Maieko is trying her best to hold it together, appear gracious. Namahage-san, but do try. You are here. They drink. You must be tired. Drink it down, Namahage. Drink it down. We have more sake. Drink it down. Drink it down. Maie brings more and more food in. Namahage sways after drinking. Where's the lazy Maie? Maie-chan, you scaredy cat! Maieko hides Maie behind her again. Come out and face me, Namahage-san. Don't you want to try some of our best sardines? Caught fresh by my son. The sardines are the tastiest, marinated in sake castle. The pickles perfectly coated in salt made by his wife sends Mae to the dining room for more food. Namahage watches. The sardines in sake kasu are the tastiest. Namahage holds up the whole fish, inspects it, passing it from hand to hand. I see two. I see two of you, Mae. Mae one and Mae two. I'm not interested in you, Grandma, for the hard work you did in the field. Pulling the rice and using the rice malt to make this most delicious miso soup. The rice straw used to make my very costume that I wear to the kede that fall for you are surely lucky. But you, Maie, I observed your laziness, your lack of ambition, 
your unwillingness to change, to help your own grandma. But Namahage, let's return back to the rice. Maya holds a tray of food. Our rice? Have you tried it? Namahage eats. If you eat this rice, in this household, you may be able to find an even more lazier individual. Perhaps my son, who washed this rice, in this fine bowl of rice topped with small, briny fish, perhaps you could smell the efforts of a lazy individual. No. No one is lazy but you. Namahage-san, now listen. A, a child that works is good. A child that is lazy is bad. How do you measure a child's work? A child, they say, goes to school and does homework. They play, they sleep, they come home and help with the chores when they can. Isn't that their life's work? With just that, how can you measure a child's work? Well, she is free then. You are right, a child knows nothing about how to work in time. Namahage raises the cup, slowly lifts the mask just enough to sip. We notice it is a woman behind the mask. Swishes the sake before swallowing. Strands of rice straw fall to the floor. Namahage begins to sway again. Maeko's chin on Maie's shoulder, they watch as Namahage slowly dances out of the bedroom. Namahage leaves the house and Maeko and Mae return to bed. Tucking themselves back in. Namahage reaches the outer gate, staggers out into the pitch black night. The gate swings shut, fade to black. Bachan. Hi. I know, I know. Fear not a thing. <laughs> <sighs> Maie's eyes open, Maieko's closed, fade to black. Maie's hand reaches to pick up a rice straw strand from the floor, fade to black. 